Hey, girl. Whew, I just had a really stressful. <laughs> what was going on? Was like the, uh... Being on with One's Hub and they just like that. It's for the clarity call. Anyway, anyway, um, I'll slack it to you. I'm going to put some earrings in first. Okay, do it. Get yourself glam, girl. I'll, get, I'll be right back. Okay. Sorry, I haven't practiced my whistling in a while. Say again. Sorry, I had your <laughs> said I hadn't practiced my whistling in a while. Most of the time, it's it's good. better. Yeah. <laughs> See that? What's that? Sneezing while whistling is hard anyway. I said nothing to sneeze at. Nothing to sneeze at. <laughs> and Jenny just went to go pop on some earrings and then she will be right back. I'm Great. keeping the ping on just so I can see when Lee pops in. Cool. So, I'm just going to stop my video and shove a little food in my face. Do it. I just got done doing that as well. <laughs> All right. <laughs> if the chewing gets too loud, just let me know. Okay, you're fine. I'm not one of those people, unless you chew like a cow, which I don't think you do. So, not if I'm not eating grass. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, there's some people that never learn to chew with their mouth closed. That's when it gets me. But mm -hmm. I'm with like, you. Yeah. Besides that, chewing really doesn't bother me. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he goes a little crazy when he just hears like any kind of chewing. It's kind of ridiculous. Oh, really. Yeah, so if I'm like eating an apple on the couch next to him, I will get up and leave the room probably. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Oh, nice okay. earring, Jenny. Jersey. Yeah, Bye. nice earrings. You're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> no, Ben, I was on with one tub this morning, uh, navigating a very clunky system, but we're all good with the clarity call. Oh, good. Uh, Courtney and I are all hooked up. I hope and there's Courtney right now. I will slack that to Amber too. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, I have that. Okay. Were there any other links that I needed? Hey, Court. Hello, Amber. And everyone else. Jenny, everybody. Everybody. Hey, Courtney. <laughs> Probably just the sales page and then, um, because that's about it. Okay. So just the teacher training page and, uh, I think I have that already on my list of links. So this one, it's, I'm gonna, I'll do it in this live channel right now. So Ben, you can see it. It's, right. um, it's just, it says once hub in the link. I know that that's the one that works. It goes to Courtney and I, we opened up our schedule for the next two weeks. Uh, we're good to go. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Got, so it. got it. Okay. All right. Yep, I see you. Mm, ben, I'm drinking some delicious Rishi matcha tea. It's delicious. Mm. Yeah. It's like nutty. It's really lovely. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Let's see if Lee is here yet. Ben, is there anything um, that you, uh, we have one minute, but is there anything specific that you don't want in the chat? I know like you will be answering questions from the chat. I was just going to be active, you know, as well. Is there anything you want us to do or not to do? Hmm. Um, in general, like I know there's not there's times when you don't want us to entice people, and I understand those types of questions as well. Um, entice people? What do you mean? I know that was you said that's what you said one time. You know we don't want to entice them. Uh, probably like what can I do for my so and so? <laughs> what can I do? Oh, we don't want to encourage them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> like you say about your kids, don't encourage them. <laughs> That's how I feel sometimes. I'm like, don't encourage them. Yeah. Not on topic. Leave it. You're like, pretend they didn't ask her. Okay. So her if people people are doing that, then maybe just not 
engage with that from the chat perspective? Is that what you mean? Yeah, or perhaps say, hey, write into support if you. All right, so go to support. We'll yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't. Um, I think if we give them answers, then everybody else will see the answer and be like, oh, I got a question for you, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey. hey, guys. Hey, Lee. Yeah. Cool shirt. You like it? Yeah, you're looking sharp. Very Santa Cruz uh, flannel, but uh, nicer end flannel. Yes, nicer end uh, flannel. I like the um, the lighting. You're looking good. Okay, good. I got a mm -hmm. little uh, D Ray lighting kind of kind of setup. It's yeah. I saw yeah, I saw his uh, jury rig picture, but it looks good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. This uh, is my last are doing, ben, are we doing some practice today, or is it just all nope. uh, all questions and pure Q and A? Yeah. Good. That's what I thought. All right. Cool. We'll probably we banter a bit at a high level about what what it's all about. Okay. But um, for the most part, we're just here to, to let people have a chance to ask questions. We will encourage them to, um, you know, if they're, they're still uncertain, sign up for a call um, and let them know that they uh, will honor the sale price later if they do. But I think for the most part, it's just going to be folks asking questions that you and I can field and, um, and see where we get, just kind of overcoming okay. objections, basically. Perfect. Yeah. All right. Let me get this food out of my face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Be Courtney, right back. Courtney, you might need to change. Well, you do need to change your name. Courtney HQ. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. I do it when I don't, when I'm all muted on the live classes, but forgot right now. <laughs> for the reminder. And I'm just going to make you guys co-host to make sure. And, uh, ben, did you want me dropping the sales page link like every once in a while, like we normally do for like webinars or anything like that, or just when it's organic? Oh, okay. Do. okay. Just kind of flow it in. I don't want to like keep throwing in people's faces. I want it to be nice and easy. Yeah, just once in a while. Okay. That sounds like a plan. All right, you guys ready to do this? Yeah, let's do this. Ben, you you done chewing? Yeah. <laughs> no food in my teeth though. Okay. <laughs> Give you another minute. I have a little more water. One second. Okay. <laughs> I'm all teed up. All teed up. <laughs> all right. I'm going to go ahead and enable the waiting room and get everybody in here. Let's do it. Well, let's do it. If my Zoom screen, there we go. Okay. Shut this door too. Okay. Cool. Right. Welcome, 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 folks. Lee's got a. Um, Thing on this morning, I didn't realize for new people to do the teacher training. Oh, glad to hear it, Sharon. <laughs> Just teasing you. I'm gonna hit this magic button, and now you're all muted. And we'll get Lee unmuted here. All right, Mr. Holden, press the magic button. Right. We will say hello to everybody. Hey, hello to everybody. Hey, thanks for unmuting me. <laughs> You know, I thought you deserved it. I'd like, uh, yeah, I think people might have some questions for you today. Otherwise, people are going to have to read my mind. And, you know, that that just gets, that's not until the teacher training when we teach those kind of techniques. Yeah, that's like week 11, I think. Yeah, I, I think remember. it is week 11. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes, everyone, welcome. Thanks for coming today. We presume that many of you are here because you are giving some thought to our uh, teacher certification program. We've certainly been giving a lot of thought to it over the last couple of days, and uh, we're very excited to see, as often happens, uh, there's when, whenever we get a new crop of teacher trainees coming in, um, we just absolutely love it. We love to, um, personally, I love to find out 
what makes people tick and why they want to join the mission of spreading Qigong and these practices and these ways of living and thinking and being around the world. Uh, I just love to, to hear your individual stories in that particular regard. And it's so fascinating how many people are showing up for how many different reasons and uh, what people want to do with their certification. And what really is intriguing to me is how many people show up to take the teacher training with no intention of ever teaching or becoming certified and how much value and uh, rich experience and knowledge and, and sort of the, the deepening into their practice that those people receive. And so uh, welcome, whatever your particular reason for being here. Welcome, Mr. Lee Holden. How are you? Hey, I'm good. Yeah, well said, Ben. I mean, this is just such a pleasure to host these kinds of things and get people on their journey and deepening their practice. And, you know, being a Qigong teacher, you know, I would have never have guessed, uh, you know, 35 years ago, as I became certified, what would unfold for me in terms of a career uh, an impact and um, how this helps so many people from all over the world. And I, I love sharing it. It's, it's what I'm passionate about. And I, I feel like there's so many people going like, if only I could have a career where I get to help people, you know, have an impact and do what I love. And yeah. I feel like, you know, Qigong is on the brink of, of, of its rising and its popularity. And there's just so many ways in which we could bring Qigong practices out into the world, whether you're inspired to teach children and kids or inspired to do work with seniors or in uh, corporations, entrepreneurs, it's just, wonderfully well-suited and versatile for many different things uh, that co coincide with what you're already interested in. Yeah, very well said. The, the intersection of these practices with, with people's existing missions is one of the things that I always find fascinating. Mm -hmm. We have people joining the program because they're on a mission to help people get off antidepressants and it's one of the most effective things that they've found. I have people joining the program because they're on a mission to help people lose weight and it's one of the more effective things they've found for street, less, uh, <laughs> street and less <clears throat> sleep and stress <laughs> management, which are now understood to be two of the key elements of weight loss, et cetera. I mean, just all sorts of things. And then we get a lot of people who, like Lee was saying, just want a career that's fulfilling, want to have that practice and share it with others. It's sort of like you get so lit up that you want to go light other people's candles, as I always say. It's a metaphor from uh, from when I was a kid and we would go to church on Christmas Eve and somebody would light one candle and then pass it around the whole sanctuary. It was always really cool. So uh, here's how this is going to go. We're going to answer questions. Uh, I'm going to do what I can to kind of field questions that are coming through in the chat. But also, uh, also, if you haven't been in the chat, jump in, say hi, and let us know where you're tuning in from. I see a lot of you are very well trained already and have done that, and I appreciate it. We have folks right up the street like Steve, and we have somebody from India. We have people in Ontario and Germany, and we have people here from Maryland, where I grew up, and Montreal, and Westlake, Ohio, Chile, uh, wow, all over the world and all over the US. It's really always fascinating. And how many people are here for the, for the purpose of sharing, but also how many people, how many of you are here for the purpose of potentially, you know, looking into, into deepening your practice? This is the best way that we have. Uh, so diving deep into these principles uh, the, the core principles that we teach in the teacher certification program and go very deep into are really the core principles of Chinese medicine theory as a whole and starting to understand not just um, what those are, but also how they function in your life, how they function in your experience, how they function in your interpretation of the world is really life changing. And so I think, uh, Lieb, you could probably speak to that. The, the five elements and the three treasures are the two core components, as many of you probably know. But how did understanding these principles and applying them in your life uh, sort of lead to, to where we are now? You have to unmute, though. 
one of those things. Oh, he, he can't unmute himself, guys. There we go. I can't right. unmute myself. Yes. I was looking for the uh, acupressure point that would help unmute myself, but I couldn't find <laughs> it. <But> thanks, Ben. <laughs> Yeah, you know, the, the five elements is a is a is a core principle in in both Chinese medicine and, and in Qigong. And so the reason I chose that as a as the core of our teacher training and the first foundational step was because it has so many applications and so many health benefits and, and so many uses. I, I just find that it's 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 a great healing practice. It's a simple, accessible practice that when you lean into it gives great results and um, you know, correlating with the five elements was a flowing movement, was a sound, was a color, was a standing posture. And when you put it all together, you have a really good foundation of what Qigong is all about. And it gives enough flexibility to say, oh, I learned this other style of Qigong. And you can say, oh, that's how it relates to these particular principles because you have now a really firm foundation. And then the three treasures is just a beautiful practice that I, I feel like really answers the core questions of life. You know, who am I? Where am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose? And it just gives us deeper insight using the principles of Qigong practice to help answer life's bigger questions and to, and to really reframe what life is about, that life is a process of cultivating and excavating the treasures, not just, oh, complaining about all these things and where we find ourselves and who we are and, and feeling the burden and the stress of it, but really creating that transformation into something that's more rich, fulfilling, and, and very beautiful. And so I feel like when you combine those two practices, we have a lot to offer, both in our personal practice, because First and foremost, doing this Qigong teacher training is the dive into your own personal practice and, you know, just getting your practice really rich and full within yourself and then being so inspired and how well it works for you that you want to share it with other people. And I feel like those two, I feel like those two practices give us such a great foundation. And then, you know, since we've crafted and created this teacher training, Ben, we've done so many other workshops and programs that those can now be, you know, hangers on these, these foundational courses. You know, when you take the five elements and you know the five elements, then you come to the five animal frolics, it's like, oh, this all makes sense. You know, and then we go swimming dragon and all oh, that makes sense. And then you have our, our seasonal workshops. Those are deeper dives into these practices. And now you're really building, you're really building your, your mansion of Qigong on that firm foundation of the teacher training. Absolutely. Well said. And, and so the mansion of Qigong, everybody, who doesn't want to live in the mansion of Qigong? I just came up with that. That could be a workshop title. I've never heard you say that before. I, you should I know. Just make a, a spontaneous your mansion of out. workshop. <laughs> Jas Paul says, Lord Ganesha behind you, Ben. Yes. And he's playing tablas for those of you who didn't notice. Uh, I think it's pretty great. Um, so here's what we're going to do, folks. You probably have questions, or you may want to hear our answers to other people's questions. So we're going to take questions in two different ways. One is in the chat. So you're welcome to type in questions. I'm sure we'll kind of have a, a rapid fire flow of those, and we'll just answer them as we see them and address them where we can. The other way is by coming up and actually talking to us in person while we're here. So if you want to do that, we are going to be posting this replay somewhere. It will be on the video, we'll be broadcasting it out to the world in some capacity for anybody who wants to come along and watch it later. So if you do raise your hand and ask a question in person uh, here, then just be aware that you're giving us permission to use your likeness and your voice in the future with uh, regard to what you say on this Zoom call. So had to say that, you know how it is. We're gonna go ahead and uh, dive in now so if you do have any questions and you do want to come up and ask them directly, please feel free to raise your Zoom hand uh, and we will go ahead and get calling on those people. You do that with the reactions button, which for me is right there, but for you might be elsewhere. Uh, we raise your Zoom hand with the little raise hand button that comes up after you hit the reactions button here in Zoom. And then we can call on you if need be. Amber also just put those instructions over in the chat. So if you need help raising your hand, 
have a look in the chat and ask Amber if you need further help. She'd be happy to help you out. Let's see here. Hello, Phyllis. I lowered your hand earlier because I wanted a clean start. Didn't know if you'd wandered off, but you're here. Hi. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, uh, acknowledgement. I'm sincerely intentional about this. So my questions, I have a few questions, but I think we're only allowed one. What constitutes in it? It says we complete two one-on-one -on -one Qigong instruction lessons. I'm reading my, my question. And then it says this session is conducted over Zoom. I get that additional sessions are, and it gives the price. Are additional sessions required or what constitutes taking an additional session? I just Got need it. clarification. Absolutely. And, and you know what? You can actually ask as many questions as you want. We're going to stick around until we're out of questions. Or we okay. I, 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 and I'll be fast. And thank yeah, you no so problem. much for this. Okay, go. Oh, it's my pleasure. So one-on-ones, two of them are included in the package. And the reason we do that is because we really want you to have an opportunity after, typically after you've gone through the curriculum to check in, get some feedback, see how you're doing, have somebody kind of coach you a little bit. Or I'm going to mute you because you're a little garbly. Have the opportunity to have somebody coach you a little bit. Make sure, you know, often during those one-on-ones, you might demonstrate what you've been learning, demonstrate the five element flows that you can actually teach it and start to get the feedback that you need to make sure that you're on the right track. Those are those two sessions are included and are something we require that you do before getting certified, before doing the final testing and all that. Secondly, if you wish, the reason we say additional lessons are available and here's how much they cost is because you may, if you wish, have more. You can have them as often as you feel like you want them and can afford to pay the little extra that is part of that. So they're available anytime, but they're required toward the end. And those two that are required are included. No extra sessions beyond that are required to get your certification. Okay. Next, thank you. Uh, sure. And this is clarity. It says, um, could you, would you clarify what constitutes keeping my account in good status? Sure. Um, the so you're talking about the ongoing requirements in the future. Well, I I, I went through everything, and these were the questions I came up with. And there's Got one it. near it that says, "What constitutes meeting my current certification requirements?" So I'm presuming. I don't want to presume. That might be ongoing, <laughs> and it might be in the future. Yeah. I mean, basically, I think that keeping an account in good standing is that if if you're uh, for example, if you're on a 12 month payment plan and you stop making payments after four months, we aren't necessarily going to certify you. So keeping your account in good standing just means whatever agreements you've made on the account level, on the, on the payment and the, the transaction level that you keep those agreements or negotiate new ones if you need to under the case of hardship or duress. We'll work with anybody, you know, just because we understand and life is life. But if you just kind of quietly st stop making your payments and don't respond to any of our emails about it and all that, then you're kind of not in good standing. And we couldn't really in good faith be like, here you go, here's your certification. I hope you pay for it someday. <laughs> this is Next a, one. I don't know how to exactly ask this because I don't have the technology, but I know in, in other situations, life happens and you change, is it called platform? You move to something else. And sometimes programs go along with that. And sometimes you lose pieces. So I'm questioning uh, what happened if you did change it? Uh, would the videos be transferred? Or do, what could we possibly lose that we don't have access to? Because I think all that's downloadable is the workbook and a PDF. And then I don't know if tests are downloadable and homework is downloadable. I don't know yeah, what's some of, the, some of the homework and bonuses are downloadable. Okay. Great question. So our intention, and um, at this point, we don't really seem to have any issues with this. Our intention is to, in fact, replatform and build new technology, but uh, absolutely 100% will not take anything away. It, it, our agreement is that you have access for life. Now that could be the life of the Holden Qigong organization if we just go completely belly up someday, which seems very unlikely because Qigong is on the rise and uh, we're doing pretty well at helping to spread that around the world. But more likely, 
um, given our, our plans and our succession plans and the, the plan to be around for a hundred years or more, it would be your lifetime. And uh, so that's the intention. We will honor that agreement uh, if at all possible on our end. So anytime we move platforms, one of the things that was very important to me from the beginning was I want there to be a single place to log in for all the stuff that you get from Holden Qigong. And so many other programs I've done or so many other people whose, whose programs I've bought have like this login for this and then this one over here and they build a new thing over here and then the login works for that. And like you're suggesting, oh, five years later, I can't seem to find or get into this thing I bought five years ago because now they just kind of moved on and I got four other logins with their company and that always really bugged me. So one of the things that was always important to me was, you know, that there's always one place to log in. So you go to our website and you go to student login and that gets you to everything you own from us. And that way in the future, we carry that forward, we move that along. And it's kind of like, we can't replatform until we're prepared and know how we're gonna move all the stuff that we already have and make sure that that remains accessible. So that's kind of the, the short answer. That's kind of a long answer. Uh, thank you. And that just reinforces the integrity that I perceive with you all. And I just got, I'm very near done. Does it unlock every week? What is it that you can access each week? Great question. Um, yes, it unlocks once a week. Irritatingly, it unlocks once a week, whether you're ready to proceed or not. So it's one of the shortcomings of the platform that we're on. It's one of the reasons we're, we wanna build new technology. But once a week, a new week will unlock, the next week will unlock. Um, so there's 16 of those weeks that go by and now a new one unlocks. Typically each week's components are uh, lecture, the one or usually two practices, often one or two meditations, Q and A sessions. And so you get probably about four and a half hours worth of video footage unlocked each week. That's, that's that curriculum for that week. Um, a lot of people, there are people who go through it in a week and do the practice every day and do the homework and um, be ready to go and get certified within six months or less. There are a lot of people who do it at about half of that pace and kind of get certified within about a year. And then there's people who uh, get certified over a very long period. It's take as long as they want. Like I said, the irritating thing is that the thing's going to unlock for you and you're going to have an email about, hey, week three is available, even if you're still stuck on week one. It's just a shortcoming we can't overcome without replatforming. But um, you don't have to do it. And really, you do have to pass the week one quiz, which is just a few questions, before you can actually get to week two. So you get the, it's, that's the disconnect. You get these emails saying it's unlocked, but you're still stuck on week one and you haven't even tried the quiz yet, then you're, you're stuck on week one but take as long as you want to go through the weeks, through, through the modules. Each one is about you know, four to five hours of content plus then um, most of them have some kind of bonus routine and often they're elements from our healing series or learning series. Uh, sometimes there are additional practices that Lee, when Lee taught these techniques you're, you're seeing in a live class with live students so you can actually see how he functions there and practice along with those so that you can get your practice hours along with going through the, the study of the curriculum and, and practicing in the initial uh, watching and review of that material. So hopefully that answers the question. Yes, it did. And last one, um, is there a retake option on the test, the weekly ones and the final one? Yes, on all of the above. Okay, and um, when does the business piece release that those resources because i i tend to integrate things so i okay. just want to look at that so the the business elements were delivered in the form of master classes and the library of previous master classes is always available as soon as you get in there so we don't have an unlock or a drip on those and so some people want to really dive in on business oriented stuff early some people want to dive in on uh, posture and structural stuff. That's something that, that 
uh, Kelly Baker has done, a, I think she's here today, has done an amazing job of helping with, uh, based on, within the master classes. Some people want to dive in on more deep sort of five elements oriented stuff. Uh, some of the some of the master classes have been about, <laughs> hi, there's Kelly in the, hi. Uh, so we have a lot of different master classes. I think we're in the 40s at this point of those or more. And those are available as soon as you, as soon as you log in. So you can kind of flip through. There's sort of a little guide to what's in that array of 40, and you can kind of go through and find topics you're interested in if you have the time to consume those while you're going through the core curriculum. If you don't, you don't have to. They're there for you forever. We'll keep adding to them. We do a couple a month, and uh, those continue to grow and um, expand your knowledge in all these different dimensions that, again, like when you have the foundation Lee was talking about, those dimensions of those master classes start to become really, really, uh, you have kind of the, the framework in your head to kind of hook these things onto. Uh, but the business side is available right away. So you can start studying that. And um, those are mostly taught by Lita Jusilla. Uh, we call her Dr. Lita. She's a, a been teaching business classes at the local Chinese medicine school for many, many years. And uh, she's great. So excellent question. I think you're not the only one. Okay, thank you. That was the question I was looking for to ask the library. Thank you so much. I'm glad you. I asked these questions. I hope it helped someone else. And and bless you all. And on to whoever else is next. With thank you, Phil. Hugs. And Perfect. yes, my video will work. And I don't know what it is with my sound. So I'm having Apple check it out for me. Okay. Yeah. It comes and goes a little. It's not happening right now. Oh, wait. There it is. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you, Phyllis. It's been a pleasure talking with you and looking forward to seeing your face next time. <laughs> All right, I'm going to do a few from the chat here and catch up a little bit. So we've got um, somebody here. Where did you go earlier on? Actually, Lee, while I'm looking around, uh, do you have anything else to say about the master classes and how they fit in? Um, yeah, I mean, I think the master classes is are, are such good bonus material and you get to hear from some experts you know the the beautiful thing about our community we have some really top-notch teachers and you know teachers that brought a lot of wisdom before they became you know holden qigong certified certified teachers you know kelly baker being being one we have you know john platt and lita jusilla i mean the, these are highly skilled folks and they get to come in, talk to you about Holden Qigong, talk to you about their experiences uh, with the practice and then bring their own wisdom and, uh, and, and personal experiences. Mm -hmm. And it just makes your whole experience of the program much more well-rounded. You know, uh, For example, I just came in and did a masterclass on teaching Qigong to kids. And it just sparked a whole lot of dialogue and discussion and, and collaboration, you know? And so some of these, master classes are like uh, almost feel like planting seeds to ways in which we can bring qigong out and who wants to be part of it and who wants to participate and whose idea whose ideas are there and i share my ideas and then you have classes like you know john platt will teach uh you know how to do qigong and connect with the trees uh, and kelly will teach an alignment class and postural training and a deeper look at you know one aspect that i might have mentioned in the teacher training but just get into it in more depth. And so I love that uh, aspect about the, the teacher training because it's ever unfolding and we're always adding new content to it. Again, it's like you got such a great foundation with the core curriculum and now we just keep adding to it and really address the possibilities and maybe your interests and where you wanna take Qigong in your personal life and in your professional life. And so I think that's that's really speaks well to the diversity and the and the flexibility of this kind of program yeah well said all right uh v davis says i'm a yoga instructor with close to 500 hours a lot of hours i teach yoga full time i want to teach qigong but also incorporate it in my teaching practice what do you have to say to v or vi yeah i think that's great i think i think what we're going to see is this fusion uh, of yoga and qigong practice where they're synergistic and complementary because you know yoga has exploded in our country and qigong 
has not it's kind of percolating it's it's like on a slow boil but it's 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 getting hotter and hotter it's 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 one of those things that is i feel like so many people are seeking this kind of solution but don't know it's out there you know they want less stress more energy ways to access their healing they want to slow down they want to combine mindfulness yoga and fitness in one kind of complete practice and it just has so much <clears throat> so much to offer and i I feel the way in which we teach it is so applicable to modern life. And that's why I love this particular style. That's why I created it just to make it relevant and make it accessible and make it practical and, and really make it work. Um, and so, you know, I've taught uh, a lot at yoga studios because the, the people that are taking yoga and teaching yoga um, are already onboarded. They, they are already speak this language. And here's just a different way to bring those same intentions about and when i taught at yoga studio uh, yoga studios people were like oh this is really refreshing i don't i don't have to challenge you know some days i don't want to challenge myself so much and i talk about the fluidity and the flexibility of water for example and if we look at the elements you know when we're doing postures and stretching and structure this is really like a wood element you're trying to create that resiliency that strength and flexibility by stretching our bodies and that gets energy to circulate. But when we look at moving the body like water, it's even more fluid and even more flexible. And Qigong movements are really mirroring the movements of water in, in, in a way that no other form of movement practice, maybe besides Tai Chi, uh, does. So you, you really get this, uh, this deep dive into a different part of the elements. And, uh, you, you know, you could do, you could combine Qigong with yoga, like the way I used to teach it, start with a Qigong warm up, do a full yoga class and end with 10 minutes of flows, or just alternate your yoga practice with a Qigong practice and be able to, to really replenish your body's energy and kind of cross train in a really beautiful way. So there's, there's some, there's some ways in which this modern yoga approach can start to integrate Qigong principles and give people even more tools and resources. Uh, I find that the yogis and the, the people that are interested in the yoga practices really take well to the Qigong. Absolutely. Yeah. Beautiful. Well, Raja's asking, how many teacher training cohorts do you have this year? Uh, we aren't doing these in cohorts at the moment. And the reason is that what we found is that by making it self-paced and giving people the opportunity to go through it, people are in such different places with available time and wanting to maintain their existing practice or wanting to, and then adding all this additional stuff. The requirements are the requirements. And since we're not taking them away from their normal life for, you know, a few weeks of, of retreats and some extra practice hours in order to do this, they have to integrate it in their normal life. And so the self-paced approach really allows them to do that at a variety of paces. So we don't actually have a cohort model where we say, okay, we're doing this, we're gonna get it done in six months and that's what's happening. And we only do that three times a year. Um, we tend to get a flurry of people coming in at a certain time. And we do have typically some kind of welcome call with those people so you can kind of get to know who each other are and so forth. But uh, again, everybody's at such a different individual pace based on their their day-to-day -day living and what they can do that, uh, that we don't do cohorts. Claire says, quick question about the assessment. Are there exams or essays? There are quizzes to get you from week to week. So to unlock the next week, you have to answer some questions showing that you uh, actually paid attention this week. <laughs> and then at the very end, there's a written exam that does have open-ended uh, essay type questions. The quizzes are more multiple choice uh, oriented. And then the exam at the end is definitely uh, essay oriented. And again, you can retake it. You can get some feedback um, if we don't pass you the first time. Uh, the idea is to is to get you to learn this stuff and get through to the other end, not to penalize you and send you out into the cold to, uh, to live in a hut in the wilderness somewhere because you didn't pass it the first time. So definitely available there. Charlene says, how many students are typically in a cohort? Again, we, without the, the true cohort model, it's a little bit um, hard to say. They, they come and go, they chortle up and bubble up. But usually when we do this, we get at least, uh, we, usually when we do this, we get at least a couple dozen 
when we do the sales, put them on sale, and sometimes a few dozen um, people in that time frame. And again, some of them are going to go fast, some are going to go slow, uh, but they have a, a similar starting time. How are we going to be guided and evaluated? Well, uh, as far as the, the knowledge, we have the quizzes and we have the, the final exam, and we have the one-on-ones with the senior instructors where you get an opportunity to start your stuff and be given the feedback that you need. But also for the final evaluation, the final exam, you are going to submit video of yourself teaching and we're going to evaluate that and make sure that you're you're ev showing evidence and signs that you're internalizing the principles and you're able to articulate them and that you can actually teach a class all right we're going to switch over oh, by the way this there will be a replay available for this so if you do have to go at any time feel free we'll get through as many people as we can get through and uh do as many questions as we can. So if your question doesn't get answered by the time you have to leave, there, there will be a replay, uh, but just keep the questions flowing and we'll get through as many as we can. And for now, we're gonna bring Susan, Sus Susan up here, sorry. And uh, see what happens. Hi, me. Hi Ben. Yeah, Hi. thanks. <laughs> Um, yeah, I have two questions. Um, it says it's a one monthly Q and A call with uh, Lee. So, what time is that, or does it change every month for the German students like me? <laughs> yeah, it change. You know, Susanna changes every month, and we try to we try to make it mix it up a bit so that we we get to different places in the world, make it convenient. But uh, there's always a replay of it, and. It's most most of the time, I would say for you, it's it's probably pretty good timing. I would say we, you know, we did one at 10 a.m. We did one at noon. Occasionally we do one in the afternoon as well, like, you know, two or three. Uh, but maybe those earlier times, it'll be your evening, but not too late. So that's kind of that's kind of normal. But otherwise, if you don't make one, there's there's the replay. OK, thanks. Yeah, because I like to participate live. So. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to have you for and, sure. <laughs> thanks. And uh, yeah, my second question is uh, because I had seen somewhere uh, there are some other courses um, or programs you have to buy to get the tier one at the end um, or, or not. Or is it only for tier two when they said it's required to have uh, that program to complete? Uh, yeah. I have seen something like that, but um... yeah, sure. Uh, so the so the tier one teacher certification package is complete. It comes with a bunch of things from a healing series and learning series. It comes with a bunch of stuff that you can study and practice with, and it comes with all the material that you need to get through to tier one. So you don't have to buy anything else. You don't have to maintain a subscription if you don't want to during that time. Although it can be good if you if you have the time to watch Lee teach while you're learning how he does it. Uh, but at the same time, um, so, so what you saw was certainly tier two. So we have, for example, we have this upcoming Pearl of Consciousness program, and that will be a requirement for people who want to get from tier one, which is a 200 hour certification, just like most, you know, base level yoga trainings to that tier two, which is a 500 hour certification, like we were talking about with V. So that's a separate certification. There are individual programs that are required that can kind of build on the knowledge that you have and, and go into to uh, sort of a deeper category while also adding a little bit of breadth to ensure that uh, as you become a, a tier two teacher that you're you're having both that depth and the breadth. But everything you need for tier one is completely included in, in this package. Okay, thank you very much. You're most welcome. All right. Seems like my buttons aren't working. There we go. Okay, cool. Uh, does the teacher training have, does teacher certification have an expiration date? Marcel, a good question. Once you're certified, assuming this is what you're asking, once you're certified, there are requirements to maintain your certification. They're not particularly hard to meet. You have to do 20 hours of various things, um, workshops, a, a course might get a bunch of those hours, depending on the nature of the course and how long it is or how deep it is. So uh, we have a lot of these trainings available and you can kind of pick and choose 20 hours over two years. 
if you maintain a subscription uh, during some portion of that time, then that can count for, I think, up to 10 of those hours. So you're at that point, you need to do an additional 10 hours of training, even if you're not intending to become a tier two and go beyond and become a super advanced uh, teacher just to maintain your tier one. It's like almost anything else, continuing the education concept of coming back, kind of getting re-exposed to Lee and his teaching and style, getting re-exposed to new dimensions of the content. And, and, and again, kind of having those, um, it almost forces review, right? Because if we don't review, we, we atrophy a little bit, even if we're, we're teaching it every day, if we're not kind of then, oh yeah, wait, what are these other concepts or how does this fit together with that? Um, so that's why we have those requirements, but they're pretty lightweight. I don't think there's much more to say about that. What do you think, Mr. Holden? Did I uh, cover? Yeah, you, you, you nailed it. I think, uh, um, you know, we just try to keep people's practice current. I mean, we, we put a very low uh, requirement together, but we hope you're doing a lot more than that. You okay. know, I, I feel like uh, after you complete the teacher training, even during the teacher training, uh, if it's applicable for you, you're on the subscription because you're just part of the community. I'm teaching new stuff all the time. Uh, you occasionally take some new workshops and, you know, just keep your own practice current. Um, and it's probably very joyful to just, hey, let's do some more Qigong because this practice feels so good. Absolutely. Do you have Qigong for getting things out of your eye? I don't know what just fell in my eye. Oh, did you still? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we call so, that do uh, you chi. Yeah. Ben, that's called do you chi what I chi. Do you chi what I <laughs> there's, there's my qigong joke of the day guys oh uh, well i think that's just one we'll, we'll, hopefully we'll get more they're not letting me go into uh you know stand-up comedy just yet with my chi jokes but <laughs> i'm working on it um yeah what you said at the end there is is apropos to dory's question dory asked if you're in the certification program are the subscription classes included and the answer is no uh the reason being that there are again folks who are just going to kind of hone in on the teacher training and have time to do the, the four and a half hours of curriculum and the few hours of additional practice to get through it within that six months, within those few months, uh, the, the 16 weeks, plus then the, the time they need to get certification over the hump. And those people, honestly, a lot of them are too busy in the rest of their life to also then maintain coming to the subscription classes three times a week and still getting their additional practice of the specific stuff that's in the, in the program. Other folks, are on a two-year plan or a one-year plan and they have ample time and so if you're able to kind of work in the lectures and work in the practices and show up to the class in the meantime you'll get a lot out of doing it that way but it's a little bit of a slower path unless you have more free time than some people who are very busy in their professional or parenting lives do so we don't include the subscription we recommend it if you have the time but if you don't we ask that you just kind of hone in and focus on the stuff that you're learning in the teacher training and the specific practices for each week's homework because they build on each other and they build that understanding. Um, so ideal is to take a little slower and have access to the subscription and do both. Not always doable for everybody and not necessary um, at all. Lulu's asking, are we ever in contact online with other students taking the same course at the same time? Absolutely. Uh, we have a Facebook group. It's Facebook. Not everybody likes it. I don't really like it, but it's also so far the best place to have online communities of people who are interested in the same topics. So that group is an amazing place of full of amazing people who interface a lot with each other, who um, really support each other, who help answer each other's questions share each other's experiences about going out there and teaching celebrate when you get through the next hump or you get certified uh, it's a really great group of people and so what's so amazing about what we're doing i think from my perspective as somebody who who uh you know in our world right now there's not a gazillion people doing qigong every day that we know so having a place to go and meet like-minded people is pretty great and uh, so that's that's how we do that at the moment. Certainly also while you're in the live master classes, while you're in the live Q and A's, often people kind of chat in the chat and um, you can access each other that way and 
Uh, a lot of folks also, after the subscription classes, if you happen to be there, there's sort of a, um, a little after party group that hangs out there, but they're uh, not necessarily all on the teacher training at the moment. So that's Facebook group is our place for that. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, I'm sorry, Judith. I got an advice that one should do five elements and three treasures before. I haven't done those programs yet. What is your opinion on joining teacher training without having done this? So Judith, the teacher training actually is, the core curriculum of the certification program is our five elements course and our three treasures course. So if you're uncertain about teacher training, you're not sure you wanna go the whole way or you don't really wanna necessarily teach, but you wanna learn the stuff, you could just take the five elements course independently and later on take the three treasures course independently and uh you don't get all the other stuff you don't get the community you don't get the master classes you don't etc but you do get the core five elements training you do get the core three treasures training those are available a la carte um people do sometimes do that but most people who want to take this deep a dive come into the teacher training program so uh I think maybe there's a misunderstanding about taking five elements before it's an option. And if you do take the five elements and go, like happened to me when I started coming to retreats with no intention of teaching, I got through a couple of weeks and I was like, I gotta teach this stuff. I gotta share this stuff with people. So if that happens to you, whatever you paid for the five elements training would be applied to your teacher training curriculum tuition because it's it's included in that. So that's a short answer to that. Ellen. How you doing, Ellen? Let's see if we can get you unmuted there. Hi, the, perfect because the person, that question was much of what I wanted to ask. I'm one of those people who am not thinking about teaching right now. And as you know, I've been, or some, some of you know, I've been doing the um, subscription for two years. Yeah. And what, I, what I'm really um, interested in is it's something that Lee did in class last week, which was single pebble in the pond when he talked about the direction of chi movement in the body. I'm interested in developing more sensitivity to my own body to how chi is moving. And I don't know if that's uh, part of the teacher training or again, the five elements and three treasures is the best way to go. If you don't know if you're gonna teach what your thoughts are. Uh, Leo, feel that. Yeah, Ellen, I think, uh, yes, you will get more deep dives into the exercises like that. And I think, you know, especially when we're running a special like this, it, it just makes sense to do the teacher training, even if you're not thinking, hey, I'm going to teach it. You just get a lot more, you get a lot more to it than just doing it like a la carte. You're going to get all those master classes, which are more deep dives. Uh, you, you get to get to, you get to go back through if there's something you want to experience, you know, that I didn't cover, then somebody like Kelly or you know, John Platt will go through the, the, a, a deeper explanation into the five elements. And, and you just get a lot more hand holding, a lot more community, a lot more depth to the practice than if you did it a la carte. So I, I think it's going to work out really well if, uh, you know, it's, all, it's not that much more of a price difference, but you get a lot more when you do the teacher training. Even if you're like, ah, I don't think I'm going to teach. It's just a way to take your practice even deeper with more information, more nuance, uh, you know, a lot more like, um, here's what I'm interested in. Let me go deeper into that. If it's five elements, if it's three treasures, if it's structure, if it's flow, you just, we just have a lot more in the program. So I think it's a great, it's a great way to go. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. I'll Ellen. add a little, I'll add a little color to that. So the, the, the other thing that you'll get access to is a, that monthly Q and A call with Lee just for folks who are kind of on this deeper dive, which can be a little uh, a little different in nature than the Q and A that happens before class, and a little more access because you're kind of in a smaller smaller group of folks who are very dedicated to to, to the depth of the practice. Um, and the the individual programs that we bring in uh, that give you the practice, the homework for the teacher certificate, because we have, so the five elements online course is great for learning and it gives you practices you can do and their routines and all the stuff that's part of the core curriculum in the teacher training. But then in the teacher training every week, we also give you additional stuff that is like, go and practice this during, to get some of your practice hours during the program. So for people who are becoming a teacher and need that, that block of practice hours to check those boxes to get certified, 
is a very specific thing. Well, it's really correlated to what it's being taught that week. So we start out in five elements with a lot of breath work and breathing stuff. And we bring in Qigong for better breathing. We, you know, we have the principle to practice and bring on introduction to Qigong. So these programs that are also available for purchase uh, are kind of given to you as homework and laid out in a particular order that's correlated to what you're learning intellectually and through the lectures during that time. And I think that will really help cultivate that sensitivity that you're looking for um, because it's, it's, it's a focused practice. And like I said before, in addition, you know, do that in between your subscription days or whatever. Um, that's a great way to go if you want to maintain the subscription. Since you're not really in a hurry to get certified, probably that would be my recommendation. But um, uh, but that's the other reason that it, it's sort of a more tailored path of practice alongside the lectures and the teaching for the principles and concepts that you would learn in the five elements a la carte. So, but seriously up to you. Right. The other thing is if you dip your toe in the water with five elements and find that you love it, you can always upgrade into the into the teacher training. But if you um, uh, don't kind of you know try either one, then you know you're not gonna quite get the depth that it sounds like you're ready for. So if I try the if I sign up for the for the five elements and decide, oh, I definitely want to go on to teacher training, I can go into the teacher training. Yes, you can. We would we would um, typically have you uh you know so yes you can and also whatever you paid would be applied to the tuition for the bigger program and uh at that point often depending on your what you're doing you could potentially skip ahead to where you left off in the five elements or again since you're kind of not in a hurry to get certified necessarily but you're doing it for your own personal reasons you might just want to review and kind of go through the natural order of unlocking in the teacher training. So it's optional at that point where you start. I know people have asked this question before, so I, I think I know what you're gonna say, but do you know when you might offer this again if I decide to put it off to the next round? Yeah, you know what I'm gonna say. Yeah, I know what you're gonna say. <laughs> what am I gonna say? <laughs> yeah, what we found is, you know, life is very complicated when you're trying to manage it. A calendar of new programs and old programs and marketing and talking to people and having events and doing the live stuff and cheat challenges and everything so things change too often to really uh, make anything specific until we're like okay we're throwing the switch now and doing this now so we we think we you know i don't think we yet know when we think we're going to do the next one so it would definitely be a few months uh but sometimes even when we think we know by the time we get there we have to move it around so i can't i can't say for sure it most likely will happen again sometime this year that's not a guarantee got it <clears throat> thank you thank you both thanks ellen my pleasure good to see you thank you okay moving right along uh did you see anything jumping out at you in the chat mr holden that you wanted to address at the moment no i, I we keep we keep knocking them out from the chat yeah. i think good um i will answer this one which is uh, judith saying would one have to take both teacher trainings the online and in-person one before being able and ready to teach students that's a great question i should probably address so the whole teacher training curriculum is the online program everything you need you absolutely can become uh very proficient and uh in fact, I'm, I might ask Kelly to come and speak to that because she's spoken to it before uh, about how things changed when people started showing up after having done the online version versus when they did them kind of live and much more depth in the knowledge and the understanding by doing it this way. So the self-paced online, go back and review, do it through video, have the stuff, take it home, do it at your pace, deepen in. You know, there's a, a study that came out a while back that I really loved because um, math always came easy to me and it came really hard for other people. And they said, if if we didn't have to teach it in school at the same pace for everybody, literally everybody could be good at math. Because what happens is if somebody has the opportunity to internalize and really understand this principle before moving on to the next principle, anybody can learn math. They can learn pretty advanced math. They can actually go all the way, but they don't in our school system. They have to move on. So they have to memorize it by rote and not really understand it internally. 
it's very similar here. If you have the opportunity to really build that deep understanding, you know, practice this till it feels like it clicks and then move on or go back to it when you realize, you know, I'm starting to get a little bit fuzzy and I need to review this because I, I know I need to, to teach it. Um, that really helps you deepen the teaching. So that's why we moved it online and did it. We did the video. We taught it over the live stream three or four times and then finally kind of got it to click when Lee had to adapt teaching live 40 hour week of going out in nature and you know that process into this format to make it really stick and make it work. Uh, but having done that, now we've got something we're very, very happy with, very proud of. Um, I only wish we had as fancy video cameras as we do now when we did it, but that's okay. The content is the content and it stands, stands on its own. Uh, so then if you want, you can come to a five elements retreat if and when we ever start doing those again for half price because you have done the five elements piece of the online training as part of your teacher prep program. So if you've done the five elements online and you want to come to a retreat, the five elements specifically by five elements retreat, you get half price on that. If you can come to those live events when the time comes, they're very powerful, very transformational, really diving in deep for a week with a bunch of other people doing Qigong, doing these practices, being in the presence of Lee and all these other practitioners is profound. Uh, but more transformational than educational, I would say, compared to studying online at your own pace. Lee, do you have any uh, anything to say about that? I mean, I think that that is that is great. I think, um, yeah, the beauty of this practice is and this program is that it is self-paced, uh, and, and the challenging part of this program is it's self-paced. So <laughs> you know, we need to you know we need to also find some accountability and that's why we have you know consistent uh touch points you know a couple times a month and we have a community and uh, we have a whole team we have you know jenny that's that's just a liaison to our teachers so it, it makes it really nice it, it, it it's like qigong in that it there is flexibility to it and it really does address us as individuals and in our individual lives and our individual needs and wants and desires and um you, you know, some people take it, you know, go get through it in the, in 16 weeks, because it's a 16 week program. Uh, not many do that. Um, and some people take, you know, six months to a year. They I mean, you know, somewhere between six months and a year is very common. And along the way, the, the beautiful things that happen are that, you know, you get more in touch with your energy, you, you really get to work on yourself. It's, it's, it's really developing a deeper relationship with you and your own energy and then the way in which you want to share that. And, you know, sometimes people get inspired to share it with their friends and their families. And some people get inspired to take it into their, into their profession and their work life. Some people create a whole new career around, around it. And um, so that it, it really speaks to the flexibility. And then we have that 200 hour online self pace, but then we're going to you know, work on our 500 hour, which will have some online components and some in-person components. And now that the world is opening up, we're, you know, we want to all get together and do Qigong together and support each other, which would be fabulous. And, and that speaks well to the next levels of this training and this program. Yep. Yeah. And, and what you just said is relevant. Uh, Judith's follow-up question a little later was concerning the online slash in-person. On your website, there are two tiers. And I was wondering what the online versus advanced training was and if one could start teaching after the online training. So yes, the online training is self-contained and it's a 200 hour tier one certification that absolutely allows you to go out there and say, I'm a Holden Qigong certified instructor and start teaching and have that arrow in your quiver. If you wish to do this, the tier two and become a 500 hour advanced Holden Qigong advanced instructor, then you may, and that does involve, we've been able to move, including the, the Pearl Consciousness we're doing this June, much of the advanced stuff online used to be, all of that was in person. Now we actually have it online. So you can get, thanks to COVID, <laughs> you can get through more of it online for tier two as well, but there is still an in-person component. So some people are kind of stuck waiting to get that tier two while we're not yet opening up completely. 
uh, there is that one in-person component. But now we have the other two larger trainings that are required for tier two, the Dalian and the um, Pearl of Consciousness available online. So two out of the three for tier two are even available online now. So we've made a lot of progress there uh, thanks to COVID. So mm -hmm. that's going to be thing. fun. Thanks to COVID. Yeah. And, but yeah, it's going to be great. Yeah, it's going to be fun to do this online and as a, a world community. I mean, it, you know, what we do is we adapt and we, you know, we, we've gotten so much experience on teaching online and creating, you know, a very cohesive feeling mm -hmm. on, on our online programs. And then, you know, it'll just be complementary to our in-person work. And so what I love about this is if you come to, if you do the live uh, online five elements and three treasures, and then you come to a live one, you get a really different experience. And, and when you come to a live one, then you have the, you have your course curriculum to review. So you don't have to frantically take notes and try to catch it all at once. In this live one, you have this, you have this, uh, you know, library of written audio and video of what you just did. And so it makes it much more relaxing. And those two things go really hand in hand. And it's, it's going to be a great resource um, to have the online components and repeat them and do it live as well. You're here. Well said. We're going to call upon Mr. Raja for a moment here. Hi, Raja. She's there we go. Looking for that unmute. Oh, Got to get the glasses out. I've been there. <laughs> okay. How you doing? Um, so I, you answered a lot of the questions I was thinking of, but I'll reframe. Uh, my interest goes back a long time. I'm a, a level three Reiki healer and mm -hmm. I incorporate the little bits of Qigong that I've learned in my own work and people who want to know a bit about energy medicine. So I definitely want to take your teacher training. Uh, the problem is I've currently got five other non Qigong certifications going on. So uh, in time <laughs> and funds, I'm a bit tapped out. However, I was thinking that since you mentioned that if I take the five elements or the three treasures, it's applied towards that, I can stagger. What I was cons uh, consider, or sorry, what I'm asking is, do you have a recommendation of which one I should start with? Either the five elements or the three treasures? Probably, you know, the way we, we structured it is to do the five elements first and then do the tr three treasures. Um, but you don't have to do it that way. If you're more interested in, uh, you know, these core philosophies around life, you could start with the three treasures. You know, traditionally in Chinese medicine, five elements was more of a health practice, health, wellness, mental, emotional health. And then the three treasures were more, let's say, spiritual questions. And so if you wanted to just like drop into the spirituality uh, and the deeper energetic practices, because you already have a foundation, you could drop right into the three treasures uh, um, and then come back to the five elements. But what we have, what we've designed it as a five elements, then the three treasures. So I think either one's going to be, uh, you're going to love either one. Cool. Thank you very much. Yeah. Excellent. All right. Good luck, Raja, with all five of those certifications at once. <laughs> Very ambitious healer. I love that. Claire is asking, are we encouraged to have accountability buddies during the course? You know, um, we don't have a formal process for trying to match people with accountability buddies. I've been a part of programs that do, and it hasn't really worked out that well in the past for me. Uh, other people have had better experiences. I think it's something that's hard to administer. Uh, very effectively, but it's something that's, I think, easy to do if you're a little bit outgoing or, or sort of force yourself to be a little bit outgoing in the uh, community and go find somebody who's like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this and in a, over the next year, this is kind of the pace I'm on. I'm looking for an accountability buddy. By all means, we certainly don't discourage that and we love it. And there are groups of people who've gotten together to do that for each other or gotten together to practice with each other. Um, and we totally encourage that but we don't facilitate it at this time. Uh, again, it's, I've just seen too many cases where you kind of get matched with a group or you get matched with somebody else and then they don't really follow through. And then you're kind of like, okay, that's weird because they didn't, they felt obligated in the program to be matched with somebody, but they didn't really want it. 
And so I think it's a little better if you just kind of put your, put your hook in the water and people who are actually motivated to come, even though they're not feeling obligated, um, are more likely to follow through and be a good accountability buddy, I think. Marcella, do we have to record ourselves practicing and submit our videos? I'm not good with technology. No, not really. Here's what I'll say. You made it here. Awesome. So you can participate in the master classes, the Q&As, et cetera. You got enough Zoom chops to be here, then you're probably good to go on the participation side. The only video you have to make and submit is at the very end. You do have to show up on Zoom to do the one-on-ones, you know, um, et cetera. But that's, again, you know, you're kind of already over that hump. The only video you have to make is at the very end. And if you have, uh, I, I would just say get help if you need it. Have somebody else come and, you know, figure out how to set up a phone on a tripod or something that uh, enables you to do that if you're feeling intimidated about it. And you just need to kind of do it once. And if you want to teach that person, have them be in the room and you're, you're teaching to them and to the camera at the same time, that's probably an easy way to do it and take some of the, the camera jitters away. So hopefully that helps. Uh, we have somebody here called iPhone. I'm gonna see if the video is available, but if not, we'll still call on you in a moment. Meanwhile, video that one sends for the certification, does it have to be us teaching in English? Good question, Judy. Uh, so far, the answer has been yes. I think it would be difficult for us to evaluate you properly if you weren't teaching in English. But what I will say is if you wanted to submit one teaching in English and then submit one in your native language, and we can kind of see that, yes, you understand some of the, the principles, even if you're not the most articulate in English, and then see how you flow and how your energy is and how you're, you're able to drop in more while teaching in your native language, we'd, we'd be willing to review the two of them to kind of get a collective vision of whether you're uh, whether you're you're on your game so to speak it's not something we've had it's not something we've done in the past but I think we'd be willing to do that now that we have such an international audience iPhone I saw your camera on but then off so I'm guessing we're just doing voice here can you get unmuted maybe a little tech issue on iPhone's part Judith also, Judith has a lot of questions. I like your questions, Judith. They're pretty on their game. Can one pre-submit questions to the live calls when they are during non-convenient times? Yes. Yeah, we do have a, a, a process for getting teacher questions into the upcoming live Q and A's without you being there and raising your hand. So, good question. Next up, we're gonna call on Celeste and uh, iPhone. Whenever you're, you're available, just kind of let me know. I'm gonna I'm gonna lower your hand, iPhone, for now. Please raise it again when you come back, and I'll I'll text you about that in the chat too. Celeste, hi. Hi. Great to see everybody. Uh, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask you about um, if there's any requisites about. Um, how much Qigong you need to have practiced before you actually enroll in, in, in this uh, teacher training course. I, uh, I've done some yoga quite for many years. I'm not a teacher of yoga or of anything that's a physical. I've taught English in my other life before being a mom. Uh, and uh, I love the, the practice uh, ever since I found it. I, I know I took the acupressure course. Um, I won a three month, um, the, the, what is it? The, um, the, the, the classes, uh, the subscription, and, and I do it every day and I love it. And I see huge changes in my body, but I don't know if I, uh, if I need to have practiced Qigong for a certain amount of time before I actually enroll in the teacher training course. I love this question so much because so many people have this question. They're, they're like, I, I already know I'm in the right place, but uh, am I good enough? Am I you know, far enough down the road? Uh, I'll let Lee field this one, but I just, I just have to mm. say I love this question so much. Yeah, it, it's really relevant. 
Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's very particular to you as a person too. Uh, here's the nice thing. It's self-paced. So you can jump into it and just take your time with the content. So if you're interested, I often recommend that people just start to work with the content, listen to the lectures, because in doing the teacher training, you get into Qigong practice even more. And, and you get it in, um, into it holistically, meaning you're getting some theory, you're getting the embodied movement, you're getting the practice. <clears throat> so, you know, yes, it's, it's always nice if you've had a, you know, a solid Qigong practice for some period of time, but a lot of people come into it like yourself with, uh, I know some yoga, I've done some meditation. Now you already are familiar with movements that are, you know, like mind body fitness that have energetic components to it. So it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a perfect time, a, a perfect timing for somebody like you to just start to get into the curriculum. Um, you know, the five elements is designed as, as beginner training, but you're learning it as a way to teach people that are new. So if you're new, it kind of helps you to, Hey, I'm learning it now like this, and this is what helped me. Now, when I become a teacher in a year or two from now, I can really recall this experience of me going through it. So yes, it's nice to have some Qigong experience, but you don't need as much as you would think. You don't need five years, 10 years. You know, It's more like, hey, I've been doing Qigong for six months and I'm really interested in it. Then you dive into the teacher training, but you take a good, uh, a good amount of time to, to to develop your own training. And then when you start teaching, you say, hey, I'm a 200 hour certifi certified Qigong teacher. I love this practice. Uh, you know, like you, I haven't been doing it all that long, but here's what really helped me. So there's different ways to, to work with the teacher training, depending on where you're at. Okay. Right. So um, I'm, I'm guessing because I don't feel that would be a problem, but age has nothing to do with that either. <laughs> like, That's the um, beauty of this practice. I mean, it is a longevity practice. It's an anti-aging practice. It's designed to meet people where they're at. And, uh, you know, I think this is why it really resonates with seniors because it's accessible and it works. You know, people feel better in their bodies. So, yeah. Yeah, well, I, I you know, I, I'm not familiar with the practice, like, not not much really and i'm 48 and you never know it's like if it's the right time <laughs> i feel like it is but uh you know i was just checking <laughs> hey you know it's like it's, it's now so you know it's perfect it's perfect timing and you know the thing about doing qigong practice and training it only helps us and it only enhances our lives and so that's why it's so good to get into it when it feels right that's uh, that's why I don't like to discourage people because we've had some people get into the teacher training fairly early and it just really resonated. They took it and, and, and ran with it into such a beautiful place that I don't want to limit somebody. Um, you know, it used to be where I thought, hey, it would be great if you had a, a solid year of training under your belt or two years or three years. But um, the, this first level of, of teacher training is that infusion that we that tends to create the, the the spark and the fire that that generates the passion that leads to many great things that come later okay that's what i needed to hear <laughs> yeah yeah and I'll, I'll also say you know i i wasn't i wasn't training for a whole year yet when i did it and when i did it it was just in person and like lisa said earlier like furiously scribbling notes in my book because that's what you had you had this in-person experience it was very transformative you get super high on chi and then you hope you remembered what happened and it was great it was you know what teacher trainings of all kinds have been for a long long time but uh and it wasn't premature for me because i just wanted to go deeper and then i was lit up to share and spread this stuff around the world. And then I co-founded Holden Qigong with Lee because I wanted to help spread it around the world in, in my own way. Um, but the, the, the diving in for me, it was necessary at that time. It was just part of my path. And so the intuition yeah. Yeah. Which continues to deepen and I continue to be able to hear better and better as I do these practices over the years. But that intuition was like, Hey, this is where you're supposed to be. So go. I was like, okay, I guess I'm supposed to be here, even though I'm kind of new. And I went and 
so glad I did. <laughs> like there's, there's, but also, if I'd had what is available now, ah, it would be incredible. And you know, luckily I've been around here helping to create these things, and so I've been able to review all this stuff at a very deep level over and over again. And and you know, as you would be able to, for as long as you feel like you need to, and possibly for the rest of your life, keep going back and retouching and hearing that that other layer that you didn't hear before. So. Yeah, the year to two years would be cool. Even back when it was all in person, it wasn't really strictly necessary. And people got amazing, like me, amazing results just diving in head first. Um, I would say, and now with it being self-paced and online and compatible with your subscription, uh, there really is, I would say there's not really a requirement other than that inner knowing that like, this is, this is where I want to be. This is where I want to be. If you have that inner knowing, the doors are open to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Got some other folks kicking around. Um, excellent question. What percentage of students who sign up and complete the program and get certified? You know, I think what I would say to that is probably the people who intend to get certified pretty much get certified. Um, we, the requirements are not that hard. We want to get everybody eventually through it. Some of them may have to do some extra review. Some of them may go real hard for a few months and then fall off and come back a year and a half or two years later and say, hey, I, I want to keep going. Uh, something happened in my life, this, that, and the other. And so I'm like, I'm ready to start again. We might give them some extra review to do or have them um, uh, kind of work with some one-on-ones for a couple of extra classes just to kind of figure out where they are and, and pick things back up, get their momentum back up. Um, there are a lot of people, I would say at least half of the people who sign up don't ever intend to get certified. At least half. Uh, so many people do this for personal growth and depth into their practice. And so, uh, but it seems to me that the vast majority of people who sign up with the intention of getting certified have become certified. Um, so, Phyllis, is it every two years, if not doing tier two, talking about the continuing education requirements? Yes, that's to maintain whatever tier of certification you have. Again, just to kind of keep keep coming back to that touch point and like touching the Barney stone and getting that little bit of that luck to rub off uh, to keep that connection alive, to keep re-stimulating the learning that is available here and um, also to keep helping inspire you on how to teach in new ways. Lee's continually evolving. So as we have you come back for some continuing education and you do a new workshop or a new program, like for example, when we did the five animal frolics, a lot of previous teachers got their continuing education requirements. Some of them handled through that. And it was such a um, profound thing to do with a deep understanding of five elements. Coming into that class uh, wasn't available when we did the five elements here. And so the continuing evolution on our side, we want you to at least be exposed to a little bit in order to continue to represent the whole Qigong method. Let's see if Destiny is camera ready. I think I saw you turn yours on a little while ago, Destiny. We'll start video later. Okay, that's fine. Um, just in case, I'm gonna give you a sec. Destiny, chat me if you're just unable to start uh, Video, that's fine. We'll call in you anyway. But in the meantime, Sutsan's back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, another question has popped up. Uh, for those who uh, actually uh, want to become a teacher, how is the pricing policy? I mean, is it, uh, for example, that you have a standard price that's to be applied uh, for all teachers all over the world? Or is there a minimum price and then you can play on your own? Or how, how is that? We have just one single price for everybody at this time. Uh, we don't have the, uh, we don't, you know, we're international, but for people in English speaking spheres who can kind of afford what we do from an American kind of economy standpoint, which is, it is what it is. We'd like to spread the, the we'd like to expand the mission to include people in other countries who aren't necessarily native English speakers and who can't necessarily afford 
full freight, but it's such a complicated thing to become that kind of multinational company. And we're still just a little company trying to do our best <clears throat> to spread the mission. <clears throat> so we're not there yet. And it's probably going to be a while. It's that's, you know, it's a big. Oh, just wanted to know. It's not that I'm keen. No, on no, that. I, I wanted yeah, I to know if there is one price for when I, when if I become a teacher, for example, then it's the same price that other teachers um, have. Yeah. It's the same. No, absolutely. Yeah. And I wasn't um, assuming that you were being critical at all. I just, I, I want okay. people to know that, that it's something I think about. It's something we think about is that there are people in all sorts of countries around the world who would love to do this and just can't afford it. We just don't have the, the mechanisms in place to support them. That's all. So I, I appreciated your question prompting me to, to be able to say that, that it's, it's on our minds, but it's a big thing. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't take it amiss. And um, yeah, any other questions while we've got you? Well, the moment, no. I have a question. Where are you in your imagination of uh, Zoom background? <laughs> oh, the Caribbean. Ah, it looks so nice. <laughs> That's what I would like to Let's be. Let's go do Qigong there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when you said you're from Germany, I was like, yeah, but you're in your heart. Mm -hmm. you're in yeah. <laughs> Well, good to see you again and uh, keep Thank them coming you. if you have them. All right. Won't allow me to unmute. Hi, uh, Destiny, no problem. I'm hitting the magic button and you should be able to unmute now. How is that? Hey, you sound great. Hey, hello from Austin, Texas. Well, hey, Destiny. Thank you guys Present. for doing this. Oh. This has been very, very helpful. Amazingly wow. helpful. Um, <clears throat> I have already signed up for the five elements and I'm ready. I'm already ready to move into the 200 hour teacher training. So okay. I just, I, you've kind of, you've mostly answered all of my questions, except that little from that, is there someone I call or how, can I do it myself online? Uh, definitely. It's a manual process. Just write them to support at holdenqigong.com and they will get okay. you care of and, um, you know, get you a special checkout form where we've taken off the the discount okay. is it a coupon i don't know there's some mechanism they okay. have <laughs> to okay. Get to take care of. okay i'm just i love the idea of the community and being a part of that facebook group and all that um and and while i have you guys retreat retreat it's my vote let's let's have a retreat <laughs> i love let's do it, it. are you guys in california is that an easy assumption we are in california um and uh but we don't really have a space of our own now that's kind of big enough to support uh the number of people that want to want to come in person so we're we're looking at well, well come to austin austin can host you austin's on the list the the the, the middle of the country is on the list and yeah. um, east coast uh you know somewhere in europe somewhere in the south pacific australia or new zealand okay any uh, any of those will work those are all okay good, good. Come, come to all <laughs> yeah it would be great <laughs> Thank you. I really, you, you mostly, you got most of my questions answered. I was just uh, wanting to make the leap over into the 200 hours. So thank you for your time. And thank you again for doing this for all of us. <clears throat> okay. Thanks. Thanks again. Uh, this is an interesting question that we're going to go ahead and uh, take at the moment. Um, and in fact, what I think I'd like to do is use this as an opportunity to introduce Jenny. Lulu is asking from feedback you've received from students. What have they said was the most challenging or difficult part of the problem? And uh, hi, Jenny. Everybody, this is Jenny Bertram. She is our full-time teacher training liaison. She is a uh, licensed acupuncturist. She's a Buddhist priest. She's got uh, an immense wealth of knowledge. She ran all of the study sessions in the acupressure program and provided so much incredible value. People begged to have the recordings included in the teaching in the program. And ever since she's come on and started really working uh, directly with the teacher trainers, it's just been an enormous boon to us and to, and to the people like you who might be taking the training. So hi, Jenny. Hi, Ben. Thank you. Just well, on <laughs> I think that's awesome, but I have to point to Lee because I I'm an extension of your teacher and I'm happy to be here. Well said. Um, I always when people thank me, I say thank my teacher. Um, I think the most uh, I would say the most challenging thing that people well, well, I see people they might not 
admit it, is that this is a somatic practice. Um, and in able to embody it, we have to drop out of our critical mind. And there's a lot of, um, I guess, uh, you really have to surrender, you have to trust. And there's a new way of posturing in this world. And once you surrender to that and really understand and be a part of this community, uh, people just all of a sudden, they like drop in line with the program and it just really starts resonating with them. And then also this, this program is so beautiful because it's really unique to what, where you are, whether you're, you have been studying for 25 years, 35 years, or you're a beginner, the five elements and the three treasures are something that you can continue to get deeper in. So really going back to basics and having that beginner's mind is usually the biggest challenge. But once people understand that, hey, if you have anxiety around tests, you also are anxious around technology, that's not the important thing. Don't let that stop you from joining that this program. Uh, this program is about you deepening your spiritual life, um, being an asset to your community and to your family, your friends, um, being a mirror to your colleagues. That's the most important thing. Like if you're, Nervous about exams? Hey, I'll help you. Kelly will help you. Support will help with technology. I can help with technology. You're not alone in those things, but I think uh, you know you're in the right place if if you really want to deepen your practice and then share that with your community. So. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Very well said, and I appreciate your uh, your being willing to be put on the spot. <laughs> I do want to make a shout out to our Facebook community. Like you, Ben, I am not a social person or a Facebook person. And I joined Facebook when I got this role. And I can't believe how amazing this community is. Yeah. Um, and it's not necessary. You're not going to get anything extra that you won't get in the curriculum. But what you will get is camaraderie, is wisdom. Um, it's an asset. Uh, you'll, you'll have a, a place to ask for feedback. I'm there. You can ask me questions. I work, um, Lee and I meet mostly on a weekly basis, so we can have a direct path to Lee as well. Um, but it, it's so, it's really wonderful. And again, your life, like your life really changes once you surrender to the program. So I'm excited about that. Beautiful. Yeah. <sighs> Anything else that's come up uh, as we've been chortling along and, and answering questions or, or things you've seen in the chat? Anything else that you uh, feel like you want to speak to before we send you on? Uh, oh, yeah, go ahead, Jenny. I was actually ahead, talking buddy. to Jenny. But... Yeah, I thought I, I caught that oh. just there at the end. <laughs> um, I think, like, I just want to reiterate, um, Celeste had a question about being a beginner. And I think it's just, it's just a beautiful, I think this program is put together. I was studying for 20, 25 years before I jumped in. And I, you always examine new spaces in your body. Divine timing happens. Things all of a sudden, seeds that were planted in your brain all of a sudden blossom. Um, so this really is something for everybody. And I just want to welcome beginners. If don't, you know, this is a, you know, I, I always pick up a little anxiousness around. We get a lot of the similar questions. Um, come on in and jump on in. And I think let's like surf it out together. But um, I think that we hit most of the major, their points. Yeah. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Jenny. Always great to see you. You bet. And, uh, those of us who are joining, or those of you who are joining the program, will get to see a lot more of Jenny in the not too distant future. All right, we are going to tackle a couple more questions because they just keep coming, which is great. That's uh, that's why we're here. Um, Claire is asking, at what point in the training are you expected to start sharing the practice or teaching? So we have a an informal answer and we have a formal answer. So Lee, do you want to cover the informal answer? <laughs> What was the first part of the question, Ben? Oh, sorry. At what point in the training are you expected oh. to start sharing and teaching? Oh, what part in the training? Um, it, you know, really, it's it, it, you can start right away. And that's the informal part where you can just be like, hey, I'm taking this teacher training. Hey, here's, an, here's a few things that I learned. 
I encourage people to say, you know, here's what I'm learning. I, I, I got this knocking on the door of life thing that I do to wake up in the morning. Oh, I just learned this breathing exercise. Buddha holds up the earth and it really helps expand my lungs. And I do those before my meeting. You guys want to try this? Or, you know, I had somebody going through the training and they were working in a corporation and, and they started doing uh, chi breaks right before their meetings. And at first it was like kind of weird but then every meeting, people are like, hey, where are those chi breaks? Can, can we do some more of those chi breaks? And then she started just teaching, uh, you know, two or three exercises before every meeting. And that really helped her to feel more comfortable with it. You know, sometimes it's, uh, you know, parents will do two or three moves before taking the kids to school kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So uh, and then we have some more formal uh, places where you're going to start teaching, you know, towards the end of the course. And right. Ben, maybe you could tell yeah. her where that exactly comes in. Yeah. So, so one of the requirements, if, if you kind of go down on the page about the teacher training, you find the list of requirements to become certified. One of them is a bunch of hours of practice teaching and uh, what we, so different people approach that different ways. Some people are already teaching X, Y, Z, you know, the yoga teachers, the, the other types of teachers who have an audience that they can start teaching this stuff to already. Other people have to go and, uh, you know, convince their uh, spouse to let them teach them some stuff or get together with some other folks or get together with friends or go find a spot to just kind of hang a shingle and say, hey, I'm doing this thing. And uh, some people I've known several people who've done it, just found a park and put a little post out on wherever Facebook or next door or what have you. Uh, other people just call a couple of friends. The point being that at some point you do need to start practicing actually teaching in front of people, not just in front of Lee and hoping that what's going to come out of your mouth is what you're thinking when you hear him say it. <laughs> because that, that's the difference. That's the, the, the transition from, okay, I'm internalizing all this. That's great. But now I have to get it to come out of the face <laughs> and say things and instruct. Uh, and that transition, you do have to kind of make that that switch on some level before we can certify you, obviously, as a teacher. So that's why the practice teaching is a thing. What we normally suggest is people start doing that uh, towards the end of the curriculum or after they've finished the, the 16 weeks of curriculum, depending on kind of what, what pace they're on and how quickly they're trying to get through the certification. So, uh, so you could start any time. You could just... As Lee said, hey, I'm learning this stuff. Hey, I'm studying to become a certified teacher. I want to teach you some stuff. Hey, I want to share, share this with you. Start anytime. If you do a little 10 minute thing before your meetings or between things or offer some people at work uh, lunchtime, hey, come come do this for 15 minutes. Count those hours or count those minutes. Count the, the towards your, your practice teaching because no matter who you're teaching, uh, you're practicing articulating and demonstrating. And that's that's what it is. So you could wait until you're finished the 16 week curriculum. You could start on day one. You could be doing it now, just casually and, and not pretending you're some Qigong master, but uh, with people in your life. Ava's saying, I live in Chile and would love to teach older people. What complicates me is the names of the movements. Since in my country, we speak Spanish. Is there any kind of translation in the program that could help me or any guidance in that regard? I think you probably have some guidance, Lee. <laughs> I mean, you know, that, that's that's because this practice came from uh, China. And so I think, you know, more important than the names of the movement is the intentions of the movement. And so I think, uh, you know, sometimes the trans sometimes there are things lost in translation. So we get the spirit of the movement and then we could speak to that. Uh, but the movements often are, are, are simple, like, you know, tree sways in the wind or cloudy hands, make your hands light as clouds. I think, I think there will be a nice way in which you can create that translation in your own, in your own class. Um, but we haven't yet um, taken our teachings and have them professionally translated uh, as of yet. Um, you know, I just did a, a, some curriculum with a company in Europe, and they're doing some translations into many languages, but it's not our teacher training, uh, and that hasn't come out yet. So at some point, maybe there will be some ways in which we can translate. Uh, I think there's some really easy ways to translate. You know, if you if you ran this, you know, ran any of my teachings through a voice 
recognition software and then translated it from there to Spanish, you probably get everything you everything you needed in a couple simple steps, but there is some technology to learn to do that. Yep. Uh, real quick, I, since I just saw the link get posted, so a lot of, so some people are asking, hey, will there be time to watch this replay before the deadline? Uh, the deadline's coming soon for our program um, discount sale, but Jenny uh, did put a, I'm sorry, Amber did put a link in the chat to sign up for a call. And this is going to be either with Jenny or with Courtney. We have some slots. We've opened up a bunch of slots over the next two weeks because we know it's, it's a hard decision. And it's not a sales. I mean, you've just met Jenny. She's not going to be trying to close you. Our goal is to have people in the program who really should be in the program who have that deep internal internal sense that they, they want to do this and pursue this. And so our goal with these calls is just to kind of give you a sounding board and, and give you some more insight into what to expect, answer any other questions that have occurred to you after you sleep on today's call, et cetera. So what we're going to do is we're going to honor the sale price for anybody who signs up for one of these calls in the next couple of weeks. If you decide to sign up, you know, within a, a day or two of your call, we'll honor the sale price, even though the, the, the deadline ends um, Friday night, I guess. And so uh, that's soon. <laughs> so if you need time, you need some sounding board, you need some feedback, you need to have a communication with, with Jenny or Courtney in order to just sort of feel it out, uh, go ahead and schedule the call. What has happened in the past uh, is some people have scheduled the call for you know a few days from now, and then by the time they uh, they just already decided. It just sort of helped them crystallize their decision. They didn't even need to show up for the call. We'll honor the sale price in those cases. Just write in and, and we'll get you taken care of. So the link is in the chat. Um, Amber just dropped it. It's kind of easy. Q-I-G-O dot N-G slash teaching dash clarity. So we'll just keep posting that periodically. If you're, if you're sitting there, you're on the fence, can often just help to, to talk to somebody like Jenny. Uh, I'm going to say, oh, Lorraine's saying, I had a call with Jenny to chat about the program. She was incredibly helpful and provided lots of honest advice and suggestions. Thank you, Jenny. Well, thank you, Lorraine, for saying that. Uh, okay, Judith, you've been very patient with your hand up. Hi. Hi. Yes, um, I, I thought I would ask a question live as well. <laughs> um, I have been, I'm a scientist by training and I'm wondering how much uh, Lee goes into the science behind Qigong. I'm not a doctor. I'm a, I'm a plant biologist, so I know trees. <laughs> oh, <laughs> but uh, I, I enjoy knowing the science behind things. And mm. I'm, I was curious. Yeah, I, I think... Uh... You know, being a plant scientist is a true Taoist, you know, because that's what the original Taoists were doing is looking at nature and saying, how do we connect and, you know, commune with these beautiful, this beautiful place that we live in? So and how do we get to know it more? And yeah, I do go into the science. I think that's the one one of the things that I really like doing is is doing an east west approach. And, you know, let's remember that Qigong is a science and an art like life, uh, like any other science too, you know, at some point we run into the mysterious and then it becomes artistic. And so I think what we do is we look at um, the practice, the movement, health, wellness, energy, both from an Eastern perspective and a Western science, even evidence-based um, philosophy. And I think that's what I love to do. And, and, and so that you'll see that showing up a lot in the program, looking at it, you know, here's how the East would explain it. Here's the evidence that we have from Western medicine, Western science, and here's where the mystery is. And that's where our experiential, our own experiential practices will come in strongly as well. So we have informational learning East West, and we have transformational learning. Here's my experience as I go through the practice and how it's relevant to me in my life. Thank you very much. And my yeah. other question was, where are people who are getting certified? Sorry, uh, real, real quick, if I might. Um, you know, much of what the ancients learned through intuition and through deep sensitivity to what's going on inside their body, uh, we now have a scientific uh, hat to, you know, kind of hang on. What is the understanding of that? 
you know, what is, what is it that blood is carrying to all the cells in the body that makes it such a vital thing? We talk about blood and, and uh, building blood and, you know, so forth as part of these Chinese medicine principles. So what is so fascinating to me, and this is something that I, I learned in school a long time ago, is this, this the thing that uh, Chinese civilization was so much earlier in some ways, it reached a certain zenith a lot earlier than European civilization. And they invented all these technologies so much earlier than we did. But what they never invented was the scientific method. There's this, there's this thing that we do in our cultural uh, upbringing that probably goes back to, to the platonic times of like you know, the, 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 the dawn of, you know, the early scientists were called natural philosophers. They're asking, why does this work this way? Why is this happening? What's actually going on here? The Chinese culture had built all this amazing technology, this huge civilization, not asking why, but saying, oh, does it work? Okay, we'll use it. Does it work? Okay, we'll use it. We'll layer on top of that. We'll layer on top of that. And I think that um, it's, so that's what's so fascinating about the mindset of East meets West. And what's so great about Lee's skill and gift is his ability to quiet the part of the Western mind in us students that's continually asking, why are we doing this? What is this for? What is this for? Versus traditional methods of teaching these things, which are much more just like, do it for five years and eventually you'll understand why. Don't question the master. <laughs> so I think that's that's part of it. And then meanwhile, this ability that science has in, the, in this method for, for uh, really establishing so-called objective reality in some spiritual traditions that's questionable whether that even exists but in others it's very clear that like we have an objective reality we can go and measure it we're all here we're perceiving the same thing on the dial um it's been able to kind of take some of these concepts that these Ch ancient chinese people uh expounded and say yeah sure enough here's evidence and it works the way they said there's things some of the amazing stuff that we're finding out um about how the body works, but like biophotonics, for example, is this weird like thing where they discovered that all the cells in the body emit photons and sense photons in a way that allows them to understand. Like the reason that you could put your body through a, a ringer <laughs> and then it come, pops back into its normal shape is because it has a specific shape. Well, part of that's figured out by virtue of you know, all the cells knowing what their relationship with each other is supposed to be by emitting and receiving light. So it turns out our entire body is a light body. Well, what do you know? They said that thousands of years ago. They didn't have the language to say it other than to say, you know, your light body, get your light body shining. You take high level meditators, you put them in these machines to measure the photonic activity and it's off the charts. So it's working exactly as described by these people who didn't have the materials, didn't have fine enough grain microscopes, didn't have the technology that we're continually building to answer the questions that we're asking, why does this work this way? doesn't mean it doesn't work. So it's fat. I love where we are right now. And I love it. I'm so passionate about it. One of the things I'd really like us to do someday when we're, when we have the ability is to create a foundation that funds study into complementary and alternative medicine, because it's so non-patentable that it's very difficult to get funding for in our culture, but it's so effective. And if we could get the science, the adoption, you know, they're using, acupuncture needles for pain management a lot more in the West than ever before, because it's like, oh, it just works better and it doesn't have the opiate side effects. Just use it guys. It's like, okay, fine, we will. So if we had the science, the adoption would be incredible. When I hear scientists who want to come and do this, I'm so excited. I'm so excited because whatever your specialty is, it's, it's bringing that mindset and your contribution as somebody who, who understands these things experientially and transformationally the way Lee said, but bringing that mindset of, well, how can we, how can we build on incorporating this into the Western knowledge base is that that's what we need desperately. Mm -hmm. So, so glad you're here. So glad you asked that question. Sorry, thank I interrupted you. your second question. Oh, thank you. That was, that was a wonderful answer. My second question was actually where people are teaching when they get certified, if they are teaching at their own account or if they go into like schools where different people are teaching. If you know anything about that, I was just sure curious. Do. Yeah, Lee, I know you have some some insight into that. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, it's everywhere. They're, they're teaching all, all those places. 
um, from corporations to hospitals, to schools, to senior centers, to yoga, to yoga studios and fitness clubs, um, to their own just workshops, you know, just putting on a workshop retreat centers. Um, it's the people are teaching in a lot of different places. Definitely. Yeah. And what we've seen is an uptick in people who are becoming certified because there's a, there's a, there's a hole somewhere like, for example, Oh, this local senior center that I have, you know, I'm, I'm a senior citizen or 76 years old, and I've been doing this for a while and they really want somebody at the senior center to teach this stuff. Could I become certified and teach? Am I too old to teach? It's like, no, you're not too old to teach. And there's a job opening for you. We're seeing over time, we've seen a significant uptick in the people who are showing up because somebody somewhere in the local fitness center, in the local pain treatment center, in the local that they have a connection with are, are saying, God, we need somebody here to teach Qigong because the news is getting out, because the science is showing up. Um, so the breadth of available opportunities to teach or places that you could walk into and they won't just say, I've never heard of that is growing all the time um, when it comes to actually finding a, a job or finding a place to teach without having to uh, rent your own space and run your own business, which is also how a lot of people do it because that's what they want to do too. So uh, really a lot of different things. The other one that I love is what I was kind of alluding to earlier about the, the people helping people get off antidepressants or people helping people lose weight. The um, whatever mission somebody's on if they're building their own kind of uh, way of helping people through something, because Qigong is this sort of self part of Chinese medicine, it can help with a lot of stuff, right? There's a certain subset of it that allows you to focus in on getting, helping people get certain results, but it's kind of like the entire pharmacy section of the drugstore, right? In a sense, because it's the self-care part of the whole medicine system. So uh, the other ways that a lot of people are incorporating this is into whatever they're particular mission is because it's just that helpful. So those people are teaching in a wide variety of ways as well. Thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. I noticed that our plant scientist has a lot of plants in her background. Uh, <laughs> nice to meet you, Judith. There's some great uh, science and studies by uh, a, a plant specialist and he was doing um, some energetic tests on plants forgetting his name, it was a while ago, but it was in, in, in uh, he was bored and he was hooking up lie detector tests to plants. And then he would, uh, what is it? I think his name was Baxter, but he was coming up to the plant. He was gonna burn it with, a, he hooked it up to the lie detector test and he was gonna burn it with a cigarette. And it would start creating this uh, reading on the machine. So there's a lot of really interesting energetic um, technology around plants hmm. and, uh, uh, I'll have to dig it up, but I, I did speak to it in one of my workshops. I had uh, I had just read the research in the book on the the wisdom of the plants, and I think that is a really interesting crossover between you know qigong, energy, the wisdom of plants, what they have to teach us, you know, and that there's an aliveness there. There is. They may they may come up in a new domain for me to study my plants. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <clears throat> that is beautiful. All right. Thank you, Judith. Thank you. And thanks for mentioning that, Lee. That's really cool. I had forgotten about, I remember when you, when you did say that. that I yeah, forgot. right. I, I'm going to have to refresh my mind on it. Let's see if Denise is uh, camera ready. Hi, Denise. If not, we will unmute you anyway, but figured I'd press the magic button for you are camera ready. Hi, Denise. There we go. One more, one more press. Find that mute. Yeah, perfect. Hi. Yeah, I am ready. How are you? Good. How are you? Well, doing good. I have a question, and you partially answered it there. It's about the thirty hours that's required for the teacher training. Mm -hmm. How how is that accounted for? Do you log it yourself? Uh, yes. How do you prove that you've done that teacher training? And can you be doing that? as you proceed through the course? Uh, yes, honor system and yes. So you log it yourself, mm -hmm. we believe you, 
we don't make you uh, get signatures from your students or, or anything like that. We, we just trust that if we trust that you want to be good. And of course, if, if you get to the one-on-ones or you get to the, uh, the uh, video and you suck at teaching, we'll be like, hmm, okay, well, you're going to have to keep going back until you learn how to communicate and articulate. But generally speaking, when people, uh, it's, it's really on the honor system because it's for your benefit. Okay. It's for your ability to uh, get to the part of certification and be confident when you get it. So if you show okay. up, if you say, okay, I got this piece of paper, but I don't have the confidence at all. That feels awful. Nobody wants to do yeah. that. So we trust all yeah. of you. The okay. People who are interested right. in this work are generally trustworthy, I think. Um, okay. And then the third question was, uh, sorry, on our system. And what was the last Can part? You if you, as you go oh, through the course, can you be doing your teaching at that time? Yes. Yeah, I would say, okay. I would say again, count any time when you're really trying to, when, you, when you're in front of people and you have to articulate. It could be over Zoom, it could be in person, but and you have to articulate okay. and demonstrate, then that's practice teaching hours. You can, you can incorporate. Well, that, that was my next question, the Zoom. <laughs> if you could do it over Zoom or over FaceTime or something like that. So Fair if game. that would count. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. When well, you I think them, if you're able do it in person, there is some value to that. It, it's uh, teaching yeah. is very different. So whenever you can, but of course, under current circumstances, we absolutely count Zoom teaching and, and do in general, just because everybody's circumstance is different. Some people are very rural and it's all they can realistically do. Well, I, I am yoga certified as well. I've been an avid yoga practitioner for about 20 years and I do teach family members and things like that. I didn't know if that would count towards the hours or not. Definitely. Okay. All right. Well, I think that pretty much answers my question. This has been very comprehensive. I've listened to all the questions and I had some more, but they've already been answered. So I appreciate you letting, letting me ask my question. My pleasure, Denise. Thanks for asking. All right. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. <clears throat> All right, we are just about rolling down the home stretch here. So there's a couple more floating around. Are there any, Phyllis is asking, are there any Qigong boards or associations who have approved this Holden certification? Mm. Hey, Mr. We were Holden. just talking about that the other day, huh, Ben? Where were we? Yes, indeed. Yeah. Um, short answer is there really isn't an effective governing body for Qigong in the US like there is for yoga, the Yoga Alliance, for example, is um, it, in order for your yoga teaching certification to be kind of valid in most states, it has to be approved by the Yoga Alliance. And they've done that by, by becoming kind of a certifying board that then went and lobbied the government to become kind of the, the board um, that could bless people's trainings. There really isn't anything like that for Qigong here in the U.S. at this time. Um, there is an entity called the National Qigong Association that's kind of uh, that exists and our 200 hour program is compatible with there. So if you but they don't they don't have a, a, a mechanism for blessing our program and saying, OK, this is this is legit. There just isn't one. Um, we are in communication with other teachers and other uh, other bodies that, and perhaps we will contribute to creating one over time. Uh, but we're, it's kind of like, you know, 25 years ago, there wasn't even a, a yoga alliance. We're, we're sort of in that, as Lee was saying, the sort of many, many years behind yoga in terms of awareness in the US. And that means in terms of infrastructure as well. Um, our training is compatible with the NQA. You can get an NQA certification if you want one pretty easily once you have a Holden certification. It's usually a pretty quick process. Uh, there's also the Universal Healing DAO, which is the, the Montauk Chia organization. And much of uh, what we teach is compatible there. So you could also, I think there's sort of a fast track for people who are Holden certified to get those certifications as well if you want them. Um, so I think that's kind of a, uh, well, Phyllis actually has her hand up. Thank oh, you. Great. I was embarrassed. I, it took a lot of courage for me to write that. The reason I did is uh, I've been sharing with some friends and of course I'm getting them too. getting these emails about getting certified and 
in three weeks, you, you know, three weekends, you're certified and they're approved by such and such a board and such and such a board. So I started doing some research. So I really appreciate this explanation to give to people who I might be telling, you know, that I'm doing this. And, and I, so it's not a reflection on you all. It, I understand certification in and out. And I liked how you framed it. We really don't have that uh, in the United States yet. And, and your comparison to yoga. So it was a way for me to share with them without being defensive about you all mm -hmm. or am I making any sense? Yeah. Or, yeah. And, and, and we were actually, Ben and I were just talking yesterday about it and even being able to, what would it take to start a board? What does that look like? Uh, you know, who, who would, who could we pull together for resources and whatnot, but you know, for now it's, it, you know, it is, Qigong is a practice where we find what resonates with us, like a teacher that resonates with us, what we want to learn. And I think it's just speaking to it as a, you know, as our own journey and what we have to share to teach, you know, like for me, being able to go and train one on one with a master in my early 20s, and then train with a lot of other masters in Asia and then put it together in a practical way for Westerners was really important in my early training to develop a system that really works with modern life. And, you know, if that resonates with you, that kind of, that, that speaks to the kind of certification that we're doing. You know, we're not certifying in a, in any one particular technique, but we're, we're getting certified in understanding the principles of Qigong practice so that we can understand any Qigong system that we look at based on the principles that we're learning. And I, that was really important to me. I, I, so I, I really wish I had, okay, I'm, there's a replay. So I will hear this again. I'm not in any way, I'm totally comfortable with you all. I'm not in any way wanting to see us become contradictory to meet a Western system that some yeah. of us need to see shift. I mean, right. so, and, 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 there are, and I know you know other people who have their certification, but they uh, developed it within in their own little board within mm -hmm. and called that board. But for yeah. me, I don't need that. And some of us don't because I want you all to stay authentic, really be. Yeah, what you, well, thanks. What you just said, Lee, I mean, I, I, I I'm really will write that down because that myself, in my view, is, is the certification. It is the credibility right mm. there. And people yeah, want to choose it. that rather than fit into the old academic. Thanks, also, Phyllis. We thank appreciate you. that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to do, but thank you. We appreciate that a lot. And, you know, it is, and it's a great question and it's a conversation that is, that we're having and that we'll continue to have. Yes, indeed. Very timely. <laughs> uh, quick one from, was it James? Where'd you go, James? Are there any scholarships available for the program? We don't have a formal scholarship program, but we have on occasion had reason to give uh, people scholarships who had particular um, reasons for requesting them. Unfortunately, a couple of those have actually worked out poorly. Uh, there was a fellow named um, Pavel something from Poland who started buying all our stuff and then uh, demanding a refund for all of them saying, eh, it wasn't what he was looking for. And then we found literally he's teaching all of those same programs in Poland. And when you run his sales literature through the translator, it's basically our sales copy, but he refunded every single one of them. And we gave him a nice scholarship for the training. So it's a little once bitten twice shy, but that being said, we're always open to kind of entertaining your particular situation and having the conversation about it. We can't guarantee any kind of approval. We can't guarantee any kind of scholarships, but please, you know, if, if you're really drawn to this and you have some reason that you just can't do it at all, um, we will sort of entertain some of those discuss, you know, have some discussion internally and feel it out and dive into the, the kind of intuitive feeling about it. I think we've gotten a little better about that than we were when we, when we, fast track Pavel through because of his, his uh, currency exchange problem. Uh, so yes, no formal scholarship program, but we wanna help work with people where we're able and uh, that's where we're at. Mm. Dory, does Lee share his knowledge of herbs and or nutrition in this course? 
I was just uh, typing, I was just writing her, her back or, uh, and not really, mainly it's Chinese medicine, some pressure points and a deep dive into Qigong. That's not to say that, you know, once you know five element theory and five element practice that we do in the practice, it does apply to nutrition and herbs because those same principles that we're going to take in our Qigong practice will apply to herbs you know, that would be the next step is to look at herbs and what elements they are, but it, it would be a great foundational to then, if you were interested to take that next step into herbs and nutrition. Yeah. I, um, right before, right before the lockdown started, uh, just a couple months before I actually went to dragon herbs in, in, uh, Southern California and took a course with Ron Garden and on the five elements and tonic herbalism, Chinese tonic herbalism. And I was so well equipped to, to take that course. And it was fantastic. It was very informative. Something he hasn't done in years and years. I was so lucky to do that right before, right before everything locked down. Uh, but I, it, it's sort of a gateway, that basis of knowledge of five elements and three treasures is a gateway into things like tonic herbalism, which is tonic herbalism is not the same as taking herbs for treating the particular conditions. Tonic herbs are, are classed as things you can take all the time. Uh, and they just understanding these principles allowed me to develop an interest in tonic herbalism that might've been a little off-putting or a little too foreign otherwise. Um, and then certainly if you wanna then go from there to what treats what and, and the basis of Chinese medicine, now you've got the foundation for that as well for, for sort of a lay person's understanding of, of Chinese medicine, which is about where I'm at with that stuff. Um, so good answer, Mr. Holden. I am running short on questions and we're been here about two hours and for the people who stayed the whole two hours, I'm impressed that you're still here. Uh, I'm impressed that Lee is still here. Hi, Lee. Hey, <laughs> thanks, guys. I know. It's been a nice long session. Um, if there's any last minute questions, now's the chance. Uh, but otherwise, we're gonna we're gonna say goodbye in just a couple of minutes. So last chance to throw your questions over the wall. Amber's posting the links, the teacher training program page itself, so you can read about all the details and also the uh, call scheduling link. We'll hit the chat momentarily again that's qigo dot ng slash teaching dash clarity and we're going to call on bo hi bo hello there we go you got what got I'm it here. yeah we got there you. we go hi guys yeah i thought i'd jump in I, i'm actually am enrolled in your program and hey. uh, so i was i thought i'd wait to the end see if there's room for me but um yeah, I joined last June, so I want to say to everybody that's still here, it is a fabulous program. And the other question about herbs and stuff, I find that, Lee, your teachings really opens the creative mind as to where you can apply what you mm -hmm. learn to Fantastic. everything, which kind of brings me to my question. I, I suffer from a pretty debilitating mental disorder in mm -hmm. borderline personality, mm -hmm. and it has really been difficult for me to try and get through everything. I'm, mm. you know, I've been about a year and I'm, I'm basically almost starting over again. Mm. Um, that's kind of how debilitating it is, but um, it, it does feel like the Holy grail for me. So I'm wondering, I guess mm. my question is um, for mental illness, is there certain areas of your teachings that I can really focus on as a daily practice that can mm. really like borderline is extremely high emotion, extremely high anxiety, clinical mm. depression. It's a, it's a whole host of things. Yeah. Um, is there anything you can recommend as a daily practice uh, uh. that could, could get me over that hump? It's almost as if I, I need to reach a point where it can conquer the problem I'm having moving on. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I think this is, this is a great topic. And I think Qigong practice has a lot of application in the space that you're talking about. Uh, yeah. I think there needs to be more research and more of a, you know, I think this is a great place to dive in because it would be great to have somebody spearhead this research mm -hmm. uh, on it. But traditionally, I would say the healing sounds practice. Yes, that's what uh, I'm saying to do the healing sounds and do that on a daily basis. What I'm thinking for you, since you're already in the teacher training, a five element morning practice and a healing sounds evening practice. And that okay. could be, 
that could be the five element flows. I think just, just doing the five element flows, one okay. of those three, and then the healing sounds, just alternating between whisper, vocalized, subvocal, inner okay. smile, um, and really working with the organ cleansing. I think the five element is a really great place to do some work. There's more to be said on it. It probably should be a whole course and yeah. a deeper dive in this, but for, for what you already know, I think five elements is, is a great place to start. And just, I would, you know, do a 20, 30 minute practice of a deep flowing practice in the morning right. and then a healing sounds cleansing practice in the afternoon, evening before bed. Okay, well, that's pretty much the conclusion. I've got to about week six, and then that's pretty much the conclusion I came to. And to be honest, to have you sitting here in front of me telling me directly this, because that's my problem is I, I know what I need to do, but there's something living in me and my mind that won't yeah. allow me to do it. And uh -huh. this way I can, I mean, it sounds crazy, but I can picture you when I'm struggling. I can now picture Lee, you telling me directly that this is what needs to be done. And mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm convinced because I, I do want to, that's really my motive for, for learning this is that so I can help other people with, uh, yes. with this disorder. Um, borderline is an extremely high suicide rate. So okay. there's a lot of, there's a lot of need for it. And it, I, I went 59 years without it being even diagnosed. I wow. finally figured, finally right. figured it out myself because I, I lived an examined life, but uh, yeah, so that's, that's, that's really great. I, I can't, I can't thank you enough. for all. Oh, the thank you so much. And thanks for sharing. I think it's such a, it's such a needed practice and to be able to do something in and through our bodies will really help the mental, emotional energy because it helps to discharge it, helps to circulate, helps to move it so that we can, and it gives us something that we can do that's empowering. So yes, yeah. absolutely, uh, Bo, keep up with that five element practice, you. you know, be consistent with it and then check back in with us. Let us know how that works, how it, how it feels. And, you know, we'll, we'll be I collaborating will. with you. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. The chat form, the Facebook for group I'm on, it's the best group I've, I've ever been a part of the most positive and helpful. So anybody that's listening um, again, this is the most supportive and best group of people I've ever worked with. And oh, wonderful. Yeah, that's so good to hear. That's that so enough. wonderful. Yeah. I don't throw those things out easily. So, you know, you've earned great. it. So thank you. Thank you everybody. Wow. Appreciate that. That's thank great. You. Thank you so much. Okay. While Lee was talking, uh, Amber was putting links to those some of the programs in the chat, but all of those happen to be included in the teacher training certification program at different phases. So the, the healing sounds is a few weeks in, the five elements energy flow is later in the, the first eight weeks. So those are all part of the program if you do the full program, but they're also some of them available a la carte, like the healing sounds and the five elements energy flow. So thank you, Bo. And uh, I think I'm not seeing any more, so I think we're going to send ourselves on our way shortly. Lee, do you have any parting thoughts, any final uh, words, anything um, you want to share before we? I think I think we covered so much ground, uh, Ben. I think we we talked. I mean, a lot of people had, uh, you know, great questions. Mm. Um, you know, appreciate you, Ben, coming on. I think we have a great collaborative team with content and knowledge and ways in which we can deliver it. Uh, you know, Ben is just such a skilled technical expert, you know, he's a Qigong master of technology and uh, putting it together in in a way that brings, you know, healing energy out into the world is, is really what we felt so passionate about. Um, and to be able to use technology and, and ancient wisdom uh, congruently complementary uh, is, is something ex exciting and uh, much needed. So, uh, I just think, you know, if, if you feel called to be part of what we're creating and crafting and being into ancient wisdom, meeting modern life, this is a great program. And uh, I love what we've created with the, in many different ways, with the team that, that's here on board, with you guys, with the students, and with all the support that we can give to people around the world going through their own journey and their own teaching experiences. So it's exciting. And, it, and there's so many areas that this can grow into. And there's so many ways in which this can be a part of your life, whether it's short amounts of time or a full career, or just for your own growth, friends, family. Uh, it, it's wonderful in that it's so flexible in what it can do for you. 
Um, but I'm, I'm looking forward to having you all in, in, in the training and in the program and celebrating together. Here, here. Me too. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for being here. Uh, thank you, Lee, for sharing your experience and your knowledge and your wisdom. And thanks for the, the kind words about me. I appreciate that. And uh, boy, I'm just, I love this community. I love all of you for being here and taking the time today. Thank you so much. We'll see you all, hopefully, in the training. Bye.